Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Hope you're doing well. Application season is kind of behind us and now we're getting into what we call research season. This is when we do a ton of our e-scouting and I want to take a few minutes and just talk about how we use historical imagery. Historical imagery for us helps us better plan our e-scouting, our upcoming hunts, and makes us feel, I, th I think anyhow, makes us feel a little more ready for what we might encounter when we go out there. So a lot of stuff changes out there on the landscape. A lot of times you're locked into whatever imagery date your map system has. And maybe it's the same as, you know, whatever date that is, the conditions are the same as what you're gonna encounter. But very often that's not the case. And that's why we knew that Gohan was gonna start adding historical imagery to their mapping system and it's out there. Here's one example of how I use it. Let's say that I draw a tag in an arid state like Nevada or Arizona, New Mexico, maybe even parts of Utah. And in those places, surface water is gonna have a big influence on what areas the elk will be using. Well, the moisture patterns leading up to, let's say this season, 2023, it could be a lot different than the moisture pattern that was leading up to the date of the imagery that you're stuck with when your map system doesn't have historical imagery. So I'm gonna, here's my example. I know that the last 12 months have been exceptional moisture in the arid parts of the Southwest, those four states that I mentioned, and that's good for wildlife. If my map system does not have historical imagery and I'm stuck using the imagery, let's say from 2019 or 2020, which were terrible drought years, I'm gonna miss a lot of possibilities. So I went back and looked at moisture patterns for 2015 and 2016. They weren't quite as good as they have been for the 22 and 2023 period, but that, that's a pretty good comparison. If I'm using imagery from 2020, an intense drought period, and I see that there are hardly any water sources out there on my screen, I'm gonna go back and use 2015 or 2016 that more closely matches what I see today. And when I do that, guess what I find? Well, I find back in 2015, 2016, there's a whole lot of water sources that other hunters might miss because their imagery is locked into a drought year, say 2019 or 2020. So now in my e-scouting plan, I have a lot of other places, places where I can likely get away from some of that hunting pressure. And in doing that, hopefully I can find a good bull. The same can happen if you drew a tag in an area or in a year that has a drought cycle, but your imagery is static and that imagery is from a wet period. Think about that. You'd go there and say, oh, look at all these water holes. But you're hunting during a drought or drier cycle and you show up and those water holes aren't available. And your entire e-scouting plan now is like poof. That's the value of it, right? When we're e-scouting, we're trying to anticipate what we're gonna see when we are out there this fall because we can't get there with boots on the ground. So having imagery that matches at least a general moisture pattern, gonna save you a lot of headache, maybe keep you from showing up and you thought there was water there and there wasn't. Or the flip side of what I just walked through in my example is everyone else, is using old dry imagery and you see, oh wow, there could be water here, there could be water here. And those folks may not know about those because their imagery doesn't show it. You might have some places to get away from the hunting pressure. So uh, I, I've used, I use this for burns. Like I wanna see how a burn ages, how, how it grows and how green it gets. I use it for logging areas, you know? When they come in and log a place, the areas grow in really quickly. Sometimes they don't grow in really quickly. I use it at times to see how roads might have become less navigable. I might see new roads or new trails that weren't on the old imagery that I'm stuck with. So as you can see, there's a whole host 
of reasons why you want to use historical imagery, look across the entire spectrum that you can, and get to some periods that match the conditions you're probably going to encounter when you're out there. I hope that helps, gives you some ideas of how you can use historical imagery as you're doing your e-scouting this summer, and hopefully it results in a bull or a buck or whatever being taken. If you're interested in the historical imagery and the many other e-scouting tools, you know, terrain analysis and all the other stuff we work on and that we use for our e-scouting, go to Go Hunt, sign up using promo code Randy for their insider, and you get all of this. Plus you get all the draw odds, you get everything else, but when it comes to e-scouting and planning, their e-scouting tools are best in class. No questions asked. If you use promo code Randy when you sign up, they'll give you $50 of credit in their gear shop. Good luck this fall.